Michael's life reads like a novel. He's been a driller on offshore rigs, a model, actor, and now art professional. He once told his mum he'd be a treasure hunter, and it looks like he's done it. Oh, wow, this is amazing. I can't decide if it's an actual home or an art gallery. Well, I suppose a bit of both. I mean, I love art. I, everything I do is involved with it. And when people come to see me or they decide, are they going to buy a painting, I can show them how, well, this goes with that, or that doesn't match, or that's too much. There's one thing that's also very important is not too much, because one piece can tip the whole thing over, and it's... It's not so good. You've struck that balance really well, though. There is a lot of art in here, but it all works. What's the trick? Making sure there isn't too much and that the things have a conversation with each other. In other words, they're not just completely different. And you know, otherwise, it's just a big mishmash and ends up looking like a junk shop or whatever. <laughs> if interior designers select these pieces for clients, it's because the house allows them to see art in a gallery that feels like a home. Thanks to architect Philip Stickerman. So when I first found the house, obviously it didn't look like this, and it was a lot of rooms, and I really needed some help, and that's where Philip came in. Hi, Philip. Hi. What exactly did you do with this space? Well, we really just connected and opened up all the rooms to each other. Um, the rooms, as you can see, are very generous. It's a big house. Um, the ceilings are very tall. And what we ended up doing was making the openings much bigger to allow more light in to let those kinds of spaces really shine. The house was built in the late 40s and we actually added on, we don't even know what to call it, this big patio outside and so just made it even bigger. Like now it goes all the way through into the garden which it didn't used to before, there was nothing out there. At 80 square meters it's a real pavilion where the views are the artworks. More than just walls and paintings, it's the fixtures of this home that make it stand apart from other galleries. Yeah, this is the room we spent a lot of time in, especially in the evening as well. The one fireplace that we kept, this marvellous piece here. We had to keep it, but we needed more light on it. Um, we opened up the windows and the doors to give it more light. I mean, you can, you can see the texture of it. It's, it's real, it's natural, it's got a fantastic scale. And it's got a kind of character, and each of the little imperfections are actually they're like a piece of art. Speaking about art, it's amazing how you can have such a bold piece, and yet it doesn't overshadow any of the other pieces of art. Well, it could do. So they have to be chosen so that they don't. For example, on the wall over there is now a photograph of a big bull from the eastern province. But before I had a painting there, and this large one behind you just killed it, as it were. It was just over for it. So I had to think of what, what can I get that will go nicely with this and at the same time have its own space. So I thought, hey, a photograph. Um, the colours go and everything, whereas the one above the fireplace, although it's paint, it's completely different, it's very thick paint, so they work like that, and that's how it's done. For consistency, weathered timber floors were stained a black hue to match dark, solid concrete floors, like these. Ah, a big kitchen. Yeah, it is a big kitchen. It's also very brave to have orange cupboards, and yet it really works in the space. Yeah, it is an unusual colour, but it's, it's quite African, earthy, and it goes well with the, the various different artworks that are up. I can't believe you've got so much art in a kitchen. Doesn't it get ruined when you're cooking? Well, <laughs> it depends. Perhaps if you were cooking, but normally when I'm cooking, you know, I'm not throwing around pots and pans, so okay. it's actually okay. Quite safe. It's 2013. The woman's <laughs> place is no longer in the kitchen. There you go. <laughs> Michael gathers experiences as much as things. Of Scots heritage, he was born in Trinidad, but grew up on the African continent, where the collecting bug bit. So it all started with these. When I was about six years old, I suppose, I picked one of these up on the beach and realized that, uh, you know, every single one of them was a, was a work of art. They are so beautiful. This one's called the Golden Cowry, yeah. The Golden Cowry. Don't drop it. I Whatever really you. won't. This is a whole lifetime of collections. Something like that. Well, I'd better give this back to you then. Oh, yeah. Let me put that back. He has since stopped collecting shells, as it's no longer considered environmentally sound to remove them from their natural habitat. Art is sustainable, and Michael keeps finding it even when he's not expecting to. When I originally ordered this bed, I never mentioned anything about this headboard, and in India they decided this is what they would give me, and uh, well, I love it to bits, so it's a work of art, 
in the middle of the room it goes. It has to be. I mean, with all this detail, it can't be pushed up against a wall. No, 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 no way. And I did the same with the bathroom. Minimalistic. I put the bath in the middle of the bathroom with the mobile hanging over the top. And uh, it's wonderful. It's a fun place to bath. Absolutely. <laughs> There's an entire community of African figures inhabiting the house, ranging in age from 30 to 100. Michael had definitely saved his best treasures for last. Oh, wow, I wasn't expecting this. So this is actually the African art gallery part of the house. There seems to be something intrinsically different with what I'm seeing in this art as opposed to what you see traders selling on the side of the road. Well, the things that traders are selling are well known as curio, so they're made in the image of these things to be sold to the public or whoever wants to buy them. These things are all made for tribal use. They're the real McCoy. That looks interesting. What is that? Aha. Uh -huh. This is actually a necklace by the Maasai tribe. Okay. <laughs> Perhaps you'd like to try that on. Oh, yeah. There we go. I do love jewelry. <laughs> I think it suits you. <laughs> I love the Maasai. Sure. Actually, this could actually be, you know, a new trend. Quite possibly. It's beautiful. <laughs> Here you go. The liberating message of this collection is that like Michael has, you can mix 1950s European and American design, tribal art, sculptures, paintings and photography. This is also an excellent middle ground where art loses its untouchability and shows how it can be part of an everyday lifestyle. Now we're entering into Pie Dog's domain. He must love it here with all these rambling gardens. He does, he does. And when I, when I look back and see the house and I think it's possibly a work of art unto itself and maybe my palette is other people's art. Pie Dog likes it. Come here. Come on. Michael advises buying art which you love. If you get serious, then ask a professional.